In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you to take your backgrounds from this to this in a matter of seconds. All right, everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm super excited because I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to create colorful gradient backdrops. And this is a technique that I love to use to add a little bit of flair to my old boring backdrops. Typically, I do a lot of product videos, but this is great for product photography, headshots, videos, anything, talking heads. If you wanna add a little bit more to your background and make it a little bit more dynamic, I'm gonna teach you guys how in this tutorial. The great thing about this, super simple, super quick, and it doesn't take that much gear to do. I've been recently using this on a lot of my product commercials because I think it adds a little bit more of a dynamic depth to your images instead of having that flat background. And the great news about this is that we're only gonna be using one background setup. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is dive into the lights and how I set up this background. If you guys haven't subscribed and you guys like this kind of stuff, my channel is all about this. So hit that subscribe button and make sure to stay till the end because I'm gonna go through my camera settings and how I achieve the lighting setup up here, which is different from the one back there. So to create these gradient backdrops, you're only gonna need a few simple things. And the first and most important thing that you're gonna need is a backdrop. But instead of wasting a bunch of money on different color backdrops for different shoots, all you need is a gray backdrop. And the backdrops that I like to use are the Savage 107 inch, so that's pretty wide, but I typically use that for video just in case. Those are the widest ones you can get from Savage, which is a high quality backdrop. I am not sponsored by them, but I like using those for the fact that if anything is too large, then I can have this big backdrop and rest easy. So let's just bring it right on down here. And this gray backdrop right here is again a 107 by Savage. I'm not sponsored by them. I will have everything that I use in today's tutorial in the link below like I always do. But the reason why we're gonna be using a gray backdrop is because with gray, this is a very neutral color, so it's very easy for our lights to create these gradients. And we can use this to pretty much create any color gradient we want without any trouble. You can also use color backdrops, but in this case, I'm gonna show you guys the simplest and easiest way to do this, so you can do it for the cheapest amount and get amazing results. So the next important thing that you're gonna to wanna to use is an RGB light kit of some sort, whether that be one light, two lights, or three lights. And right now I'm gonna be using the Amaran P60 RGB LEDs. These are really awesome, powerful little panels that pack a punch, but also pack a lot of color. You do not have to use three, and I'll actually show you guys some examples, but we're just gonna set these up because these are relatively cheap, and you also get three of them, which is awesome because, you know, then you can have more colors for your gradient. So we're gonna set all three of these up using light stands and a C stand. All right, so next we're gonna take a light stand and just start attaching these like I said. And the cool thing about these is that you can pretty much attach them vertically or horizontally. And you wanna start getting kind of creative at this point because what you wanna do is wherever you place your lights, that's where your gradient's gonna show up with this. Typically, what I like to do is I like to put one RGB on this side, one RGB on this side, and one either on the top in the center or one at the bottom in the center. But what's cool about this is this just screws right on like that and then we can plug it in or throw a battery in it. Super simple, super easy. So let's do the rest of them. Typically when you first turn these on, they're not gonna be in any kind of RGB color. It's gonna be on CCT, which is gonna be your regular light color, which is gonna have your Kelvin. But we're gonna press light mode right in here. And then we're gonna go down to HSI, click that. And then from here, you can change your hue, which is gonna change the color of your RGB light. This is gonna be the intensity and this is gonna be saturation. We're gonna leave saturation at 100. And then we can turn this up just to show you what it looks like right here. I got it at 100 and it's blue right now but if we turn it, sorry, let me play with it a little bit. Now we have a little bit more of a green, and now we're going a little bit more of a yellow, 
and we're gonna keep cranking it. Now we have a red. Now that we have our background lights set up, this is the coolest part about it. Cause I told you, you can place your background lights in different places to get different types of gradients. Just think about if you've ever used like a radial gradient in Photoshop or anything like that. And that's gonna be based on where you placed your lights. But we really don't need to change our lighting setup to get a really powerful gradient or different gradients. So what I'm gonna show you guys now is what I love about Aperture is I can go into the Sidious link right here on my phone and I can click on our scene and I have all of our lights set up right here. And the first thing that I can do is I can turn off all the lights like that, boom, now all of our lights are gone and I can turn them back on like so. I can turn all of our lights on and off like this. You can adjust the power of all your lights right here or we can start going into these lights and changing the colors. I have it up on HSI right now. As you can see, we can just go back to it like that and we can start changing the colors like this. So I can play with this light and we can go more red right here. We can go to our left light and we can go more pink right here. And then we can go to our middle light, which we actually already have it red, sorry. And then we can go to our right light and we can go more red like that. So now we have red and purple, and even though that it's orange on here, because you have to be aware that your colors are gonna be affected by the other lights on the background. And typically what I aim to do is, I try to make my colors in the background tertiary colors. And what tertiary colors are, are colors that are gonna be next to each other on the color wheel. Because if you start to change your colors too much, like if I go this way, it just doesn't look as good. Right, so I like to go with colors that are gonna match each other. So right there, I love that look right there. This is actually very similar to something that you would see on a desktop on an iMac or Apple products. And great inspirations for cool gradients and cool gradient design or concept design. You can look on Pinterest, you can look at the screensavers on Apple's desktop computers. But yeah, you can just keep playing around with this in different ways. Now we have purple and red. Not a huge fan of that, but we can start adjusting it. And as you're changing, you can kind of look at it and be like, oh, I like that a little bit more. Maybe we want to go a little bit lighter. There's green. Again, not as pretty, but we can go with that right there. And then we can go to our left light and let's go a little bit more red. And now we have a red and blue, but to make it really pop, then we need to bring this center one into blue like that. And that's as simple as it is to create these gradients. And there's so many different looks that you can do with it. Another cool thing about this, say we don't wanna do gradients at all. We can just go to all fixtures like this. And since we have a gray backdrop up here and you don't wanna buy a bunch of different backdrops, boom, 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 boom. Now I'm just dragging this across, creating different colors. We want a blue backdrop for our video, boom. Easy as that, right? We wanna have nothing, which I don't know why you'd wanna do, but you know, just to give you examples, of what you can do with these different colors and backdrops. And we're just doing this now. And this is what's so powerful about this. But again, I love just playing with these and let's mix this up a little bit. Let's see how we have like a lighter blue and a darker blue, even just that, the subtleties that you can do with this. And we'll bring this one maybe a little bit lighter. I don't wanna go red there. Just like that. Now our gradient is starting to change. We can even go to the one on our right and lighten it up just a smidge. Whoops, that's the wrong one. We can go to our one on the left. I'm doing this all backwards. Lighten it up just a smidge like that. And now we have ourselves a spot gradient, just like that. Let's talk about my setup. Right now I'm just rocking the R5 with the Canon 50 millimeter. And the reason why I'm doing the 50 is because that's what's gonna be the closest to the human eye. And it's a very flattering focal length for your face. Next, I have a Ninja on here. And why I'm using the Ninja is because I can use my colors and look at the IRE chart to make sure that my lighting on my face in the background is correct. And what I'm aiming for is the hottest spot on my face is gonna be anywhere from 59 to 77, which is gonna have this gray right here. And the reason for that is that your skin tone should be typically around 70 IRE. Then, the other things that I wanted to talk about are my settings right in here, and I can just pop these up for you guys. And right now, I am at, it was different, sorry. I'm at a 3.5 at 1 50th at 320 ISO, 
and I'm just shooting this at 4K and I'm not doing C log for this. And the reason why is because when you can control your lights, you don't need that many stops at dynamic range. And since I have so much control over this, since it's in a studio, I can do exactly what I want without having the hassle of color grading. But when I work with products and stuff like that, I usually typically shoot in C log. Next, we have a 600D over here. You don't need that type of light. And because this is way too powerful, I have this at 0.006%. So not even 6%, 0.006 just for this. And the reason why I have this light is for product videos for slow motion. And I'm usually having these have to be cranked up a lot higher for a lot of the videos. And for this, we don't need it at that. And that's why I say, I'm saying you don't need that kind of light. And then I have a circular parabolic um, diffusion right on here. And that's gonna be my key light. Then on the other side, I have a Nova 600. Again, you don't need this powerful of a light. Really, this is gonna be your fill light and this is only at 0.02%. These are much too powerful for this. These are the only lights that I have for this because I use these for other scenarios. And then lastly, I just have a tube light right there in the back, just an aperture tube light. And what that's doing is creating a nice rim on the background. And that's it for my lighting setup. I have my key, my fill, and a rim and then the rest of it is just for that background like I showed you guys earlier. Well, you guys, that is it for this tutorial. I promised you that it was gonna be short, sweet, and simple because I wanna do more of these, and this is such a powerful thing you can do. Even though it's super short, you can use this on your backdrops and make your videos or your photos just stand out and be so much more amazing. Please like, share, subscribe, and until next time,